Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to work on the Crochet Textured Lap Blanket. But before we do, let's listen to this real quick. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So let's take a look at the pattern. We're gonna be doing a lap gant today. This is something that's not very wide. This is just for the lap. Maybe you know somebody that might be confined to a wheelchair or something like that where they just need their legs covered and it's just a really kind of a cool idea as far as being very simplistic. It has beautiful textures. As you can see it's almost like the arrow stitch in some way and uh, this particular pattern has a diagram in order for us to be able to follow as well. So if you love this pattern so much in order to change this pattern you can do multiples of four. So even though it's giving us an instruction of chaining of 92 in order to create this look if you chain in multiples of four you will have success and you can change it to be a full bed spread size if you wish. You're also gonna be ne needing Karen one pound yarn today a size K six and a half millimeter size crochet hook. So without further ado let's take a look at the diagram and then we'll carry on from that point. So let's take a look at the diagram here. We have a very simplistic idea. I worked it out so it was multiples of four as you can see. And so what's gonna happen is that we are going to establish a work and the key concept is to use these chain one spaces that we're gonna create. You can see these ovals as the base point of indicating where these go going into. So what's gonna happen is that we are going to do a, uh, a double, uh, sorry, a treble crochet that goes across on an angle and then we're going to fill some stuff in and then we're gonna come back. But these two that belong together are like two double uh, trebles together in order to make it work in order to do the arrow. It's really not hard. So you just gotta follow that in order to pay attention. Once you get established with this pattern I think you can whip it off real quick. I know I did and it's just a matter of paying attention to every other row when you're going to do so. There's also a very simplistic pattern uh, for the border and it's just uh, looks like it's just one single crochet evenly around and uh, we just have that as going in. It's just a different color to make it really accent itself. So just for kicks here is a quick sample and we're going to be doing this. It's just a small sample as you can see it's multiples of four and then the arrows are happening. This is a one sided pattern so on the other side there is no texture at all. It's completely flat but this side has rich in texture. It's almost like a tire treads really and it's really quite fun. So let's begin. So let's begin today. We're going to do a slip stitch or slip knot to put onto your size K six and a half millimeter crochet hook and you are just going to chain either 92 if you would like the actual pattern itself or chain in multiples of four if you'd like to change it. If you're changing the size of this pattern you'll have to figure out what how much yarn you're going to need as the, it will change the yarn quantities for sure and this is very rich in texture and you will notice that it's gonna be nice and snug when you get this done. So I'm gonna chain in multiples of four. So one two, three and four or you can chain in nine, uh, 92 if you just want to skip that process. So one, two, three and four and you continue to do that until you're satisfied. So one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three and four. And once you're satisfied if you're doing a multiples of four just stop and if you're doing the pattern just stop at 92 and I'll see you on row number one. So as we begin row number one just take a look here and uh, here's the instruction. We're gonna go second chain from the hook and we're gonna single crochet the next three and then we're gonna chain one, skip one and then single crochet in the next three, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next three and we do that all the way re across regardless of what size you're doing. So let's do row number one together. So to begin second chain from the hook so just one and two turn it over get the back loop only and you're going to single crochet into that one plus the next two. So keep on going and so you'll have three single crochets in a row and then what you have to do is that you just have to chain one. So chain one, skip one chain and go to the second over and single crochet into that one plus two more of its friends. So you're keeping them in groups of three. It's kind of the whole um, trick to this whole pattern is to think about it in groups of three. So chaining one, skip one and then single crochet into the next three. Please do that all the way down your chain. When you come to the end of the chain I've got chain one here. I'm gonna skip one and I have three chains left. If you've got your stitch counts proper then you will have the right amount of stitches left at the very end of your chain. 
So if your stitch counts aren't right then something you've just done is wrong or your starting chain was wrong. And that's how you get there. So let's move back to the pattern and let's check out row number two. So let's begin to do row number two together. We're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and then we're gonna put one double crochet in each stitch all the way across including one into that chain one space that we made. So you're gonna notice that these ones that come down all the way across come all the way back to the starting chain when we go to do that and so you're just filling in the spaces. So these chain one spaces that you're making and skipping over here they become relevant later on in the project. So let's move on to row number two. So let's turn our work and go for row number two. We're going to chain up three which counts as a double crochet and we're going to double crochet in each of the st uh, stitches across. So just the first three are into the single crochets that are already there. And the next one is a chain one space and you go right into the space itself and fill that in with the double crochet. So it keeps that space open just like you see it. So then you continue to double crochet yourself across like so and then the next one is a chain one space and then just fill that in. So please do that all the way across for row number two. So I'm coming into the end of row number two and I'm just filling everything in with the double crochet including that final one and that was it. So you still don't see any texture yet because we're gonna turn our work and do this on row number three. So let me take you back to the pattern and show you what you're up to next. So in row number three we're now going to establish these uh, uh, lines going across which creates the pattern. So we're going to chain up one, one single into the first one and then we're gonna do a, this a double or this treble going all the way into the chain way down here and then we're going to uh, single crochet the next one, chain one, skip one, single crochet the next one and then these two you have to do at the same time in order to make it work but it's not hard. So let me show you row number three. So let's begin row number three. This is not hard. So getting us started is probably the hardest thing and then everything else just falls in line. So you're gonna chain up one first and this is gonna happen every time that we're doing this um, when we're going in this direction when we do the, the arrows coming down. So basically you have a two step pro uh, process. You either have uh, this double crochets or you have what's gonna come up next. So I chained up one and we're gonna single crochet into the first one. And now we're going to do a treble and we have to look to where the first space is way down here. And we're gonna wrap that hook first and we're just gonna come up from under underside of it. Okay, so up underside of the chain, pull through, pull through two and two and two. And so now that comes up and it looks like it's gonna create like a, a uh, tension. Just be easy with it and it makes sense. So this particular one was the officially the next stitch that was in a row. So you have to classify that as that that's part of that stitch. So you're gonna single crochet into the very next one after that. Okay, so whenever you do these that come down they count, they count as the stitch that they're in front of. So then you chain up one, skip one and single crochet into the next. So this is your next chain one space that you're gonna be playing with next time around. So then we have to uh, then do the line coming down on this side and this side at the same time. It's not hard watch. So you're gonna wrap that hook first and you're gonna come back to the same chain one space that you'd already were in and you're gonna come up from the, un the underside and pull through and pull through two and two and stop. Do not finish that. So in order to do the other side at the same time you have to reach to the other chain one space way over here, wrap the hook twice and come up and do that one over here. So pull through and pull through two and two. So now you have what appears to be three loops on your hook. So you're just gonna wrap and pull through all three and now you just have the lines being established in an arrow. So as I mentioned because you've done that, that counts as this stitch that you're just in front of and so you're going to single crochet the next stitch, chain one, skip one and single crochet into the next. So now we're gonna do another uh, one of these. Okay, so you do all of these uh, like together as you're doing them across. Only time that you don't do them together is when you're on an edge because you can't obviously go beyond the edge. So let's uh, do this again. So we're gonna wrap the hook twice and you're gonna come back to the one that you were just in way over here. Pull through, pull through two and two and hold that 
and now you're going to wrap the hook twice and then go to the next one that you can find way over here. And pull through, pull through two and two. So now you can see that you have these two right here. You have three loops on the hook, pull through all three. And then that counts as the one that you're skipping in behind. So this one and then you're gonna single crochet into the next one. So single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. So we're gonna do that again. So watch, we're gonna wrap the hook twice going into the one that you were just in down here. Pull through, pull through two and two and hold and then wrap the hook twice and go to the next one. And you're gonna do that all the way across on this row. It's always kinda harder in the beginning to get everything established and getting used to the, to the, um, the, the technique. You got three loops on the hook, pull through all three. That counts as the one that's just right behind it. So go to the next one, single crochet, chain one and single crochet. So because you're on an edge, okay, you can only go in one direction now because there's nothing over here. So we're gonna wrap the hook twice and go to the one that you were just at down here, pull through and you're gonna finish it completely. So just go right to the end and then you just single crochet into the turning chain. You see that? So the only the ones in the end have uh, have just one and all the rest of them you can see that they're joining as you go. So let's turn our work and let's go back to the pattern and review row number four. So in row number four we're gonna return back to just doing double crochet. So every other row is just a double crochet. So chain up three which counts as the double crochet and you're gonna double crochet in each stitch all the way across including that chain one space. So it becomes the background filler for what's in behind these uh, lines as you have it there. So let's do row number four together. So let's do row number four together. You're gonna turn your work and you're gonna chain up three. So one, two and three that counts as a double crochet and so you're just gonna move all the way across with just double crochets and remember how it was in the very beginning is that we had three double crochets in a row and then it was a chain, we filled in the chain one space. Well it's still the same way in this row as well. So every, every row is like that when you're doing this just double crochet. So fill in that chain one space and then keep on moving across with just one double crochet in each. And I'm gonna come to another chain one space. So just kind of think about it as a groups of three. Here's the next chain one space there. So you can see it's skipped over down here. So it creates that open space and just double crochet. So I'll see you at the end of this row. So let's carry on and we're coming to the end of the row and just filling everything in with the double crochet. So this is the back side of the project so it has no texture on the back. So let's turn it over and let's go back to the pattern and review number five. So you can see we're gonna now put these arrows back in which we'll cover right over top of that. Let's do that next. So here we are back on row number five. So row number five does the same thing. Okay, exactly the same. So the first one comes down. So the only difference is, is that instead of going into the chain, you're gonna go into this particular stitch right here. And this is the chain one space is right above it. So you just have to access it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then once you get those two, they're together as normal and you carry on the pattern as you would. So let's uh, begin doing row number five. So let's begin doing row number five. It's exactly the same as what you just did down here. The only difference is that you're not starting in the chain. You're going into the space over here. So let me point that out for you before we get there. So you're gonna notice that there's a chain one space down here. There's an exposed stitch right here. So this is exactly where you're gonna play right in the stitch. So every time that there's a chain one space and you can pretty much see it every time it happens is that you are just, it's gonna be in between the two right there. It's gonna be right in between. So here it is right there and you can just open it up and you can see it. It's right there. So that's exactly where we're going to play. So let's begin row number five. We're gonna chain up one and we're gonna single crochet into the first one. So the first one's gonna be by itself and it's gonna reach over to this stitch right down here. So let's wrap that hook twice and we're just gonna come in from the front and then when we go to put it in, we're not going all the way to the back. We're just gonna just lift off that stitch through the front and pull through and pull through two and two and two. So you don't go all the way through it. You just kind of lift it out of the way. So then that covers that first stitch here. So you go to the next one, single crochet, 
chain one, skip one, one single crochet. So you're creating the that same gapping then for the next time you need to use it. So this time we want to create these two together. So we're going to wrap the hook twice and go in into the same one that you were just in just through the front but make sure that you pop it back out through the front just to lift it off, pull through, pull through two and two and hold it. Don't finish. So wrap the hook twice and let's come to the next one that's in between this one here and just come in and just pick it out and pull through, pull through two and two. So now you have it those two ready and you're gonna pull through all three loops and it's finalized. So that's gonna cover that stitch that's right behind. So you come to the next one and single crochet, chain one and then a skip one, one single crochet in the next. So now we're going to again do exactly what you just did over here. So just wrap the hook twice, come into the same one that you were just in through the front, just pick it off, pull through two and two and hold it. Wrap the hook twice and come to the next one that's in between the next and then just pick it off. And then once you have them both on there just pull through all three loops. So then single crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next and then I'm gonna speed up a little bit. So wrap the hook twice. So going into the same one that you were just in, pick it off from the front. It's a matter of getting used to this pattern and how to do that and it's not a hard thing. So just don't finish it, wrap the hook, come into the next one. See the spacing? Just pick it up. And then once you have them ready, pull through all three. And then so single crochet into the next one, chain one, skip one, one single crochet in the next. And now the last one is just gonna come in on an angle so wrap it twice come into the one that you were just in and you're gonna finish that completely. That's a treble and then just single crochet into the turning chain like you have here. So let's turn our work and just can, uh, let's just do one more repeat of this so that you understand it. So you're gonna turn your work and when you're on this side you're just gonna do double crochets. So one, two and three and then you're just gonna double crochet in each of the double crochets across and when you hit a chain one space just double crochet right into the chain one space that you have just to keep that consistent. So what I want you to do is go all the way across and just double crochet and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm just double crocheting all the way across in this row so every time you're looking at the back that's all it is. Nice and simple. I think getting started is probably the hardest thing of this whole project. And now we're gonna turn our work and expose ourselves to the texture all over again. So now we're gonna fill in that texture and I'm gonna chain up one one single crochet in the first one and now we're gonna create this uh, line going down on an angle. So wrap that hook twice coming into the chain one space. Okay, go right into that stitch. Keep it on the front side and finish it completely and then single crochet the next one, chain one and then skip one, single crochet in the next. So now we're gonna do these two in at the same time. So wrap the hook going into the same one that you were just at down here. Pull through two and two but hold it and then wrap it again and then come into the next one that's on the other side. Once you have the three loops back on your hook pull through all three and then single crochet in the next one, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next and continue it along. So it's really not a hard pattern to do. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna leave the rest of this for you and then you're going to just get to the size that you want. It's recommending 45 inches long. That's the length of the blanket if you wish to make it uh, for a lap can. But if you of course if you want to make it for any other sizes you can stop when you're satisfied. Because this is textured and overlaying you'll notice that it's a nice heavy um, lap can itself so it will keep somebody nice and uh, cozy and uh, really quite fabulous as well. And as a big bed spread it might be a nice heavy one for the winter as well. So you're just continuing to go across and then when you're satisfied at the very end of it what I'm about to do just finish that last one it's by itself and then single crochet. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna leave the rest of that for you and then I'm gonna just cover on how to do the border next. 
So to do the border you're going to fasten off on the color that you're using. If you wish to change color I'm gonna keep the same color just for convenience for myself and then you're just gonna finish it off and you're gonna weave in your ends. So I have another sample that I did as my test trial to make sure I understood the pattern and I'm gonna use that as my sample in order to do the border around. So let's begin to do the border. I'm using the same color and I'm going to start with the slip stitch or slip knot on my, my hook and I'm gonna come right into a corner stitch. So when you go to finish these you wanna make sure that you're ending off on the actual um, arrows coming down to make it to make it like, like it's finished. So we want to begin to attach it which I just did. Chain one and every time there's a corner on this you're going to single crochet three times in the same corner to make that turn and now you're just gonna go in every stitch all the way across with one single crochet. So down the sides is just gonna be equally spacing single crochets and I'll cover that in just a moment when I get there and uh, so you're just gonna single crochet across and let me get to the first corner. Show you what to do. When you get to your corners in the very turning corner you want to put in three single crochets. So one, two and three and I'm just naturally turning my project. So now I'm gonna work down the side. You just wanna equally space these out as you go down. So I'm just gonna put two single crochets into the side post as they go down like so and then there's another little spot here. This is a single crochet. I'm gonna put it into one there and then two into the next big post. This is the double crochet and then one into the single crochet post and so on. So when I get all the way down to the corner what I want to do is that I want to put in three single crochets into the corner and then work my way across the bottom and then turn my corner three single crochets and work my way all the way back up. So please do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round and we'll just gotta do one more round after that. As you come around I had you put in three single crochets into the very beginning so therefore you're just coming up on the side of this post and you're just going to join it to the top of the beginning uh, single crochet. So let's begin round number two. It's the, only, it's the only round. If you would like a thicker border you can just continue to go around a few more times if you want to. Here's the trick though. Um, this is um, if you're gonna do that just um, make sure in the corners that you're going to put in uh, three single crochets into each and just single crochet each and around. But now we're gonna finish this off um, as per the instructions and that we need to do a reverse single crochet. So to do that we're just going to chain up one and go into the same stitch that you were just did the join and you want a single crochet. But instead of moving forward like you would you wanna move backward towards your hand. So just coming into the stitch right before it and just yarning over pulling it down and through and then pull through two. So then come to the stitch right before it Okay, it's getting started is always the hardest with this particular stitch. And then keep on going. So just one right before it. And you're gonna notice that this is gonna create a nice line around the outside, a nice border. So it's just, it's almost like it gives it a rope appearance and you just reverse single crochet. So if you're doing the reverse single crochet right now then what happens is that you just do one in each stitch so you don't worry about putting two or three into the corners. You just follow it around with just a reverse single crochet. This is also known as a crab stitch for anybody that wants to be really technical as well. So um, just do that all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round and we'll just cover on how to fasten off. So as you come back around you just want to slip stitch to the beginning that you had started with just right here and then we're just going to um, just use a darning needle and we're gonna get rid of this loose end. So you're gonna kind of appear to have a gapping space of where it is right here. So but we're gonna fill that in by pulling it together with the darning needle. You don't wanna mess with the, the borders too much with this kind of um, stitch. It can uh, change the look of it completely. So just coming up right underneath itself. So don't come in to the edge. Just stay right up underneath the stitches and just drag it through. And what that will do is it will pull that stitch in line like the rest of them. Then you're gonna go back in the same direction, the other direction you just came through a different set of fibers. So this is number two and then go back a third time for number three. So third time is a charm and you're good to go. So now you can safely just trim that yarn right down to the project. And then you're good to go. So this would be how you would complete something like this. Let me back out the camera now. And so you've, you've learned how to go from a little uh, simple concept like this 
actually it looks like that and uh, whatever way you wanna look at it, it's completely up to you and then we have just done the border just like you see here. So until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as the Yarnspirations.com. This is the Crochet Texture Lap Blanket. It's really an easy blanket to be able to do and I think that you can give this to somebody you love or just do one for yourself as well. Until next time, have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.